In this example, example 10.4, we're going to look at another example of using fsolve, but this time with a freely variable parameter or a set of parameters. Now, we're going to consider our previous example, example 10.3, but this time we're going to look at a range of purities for our product C. So we're going to find the temperature, the range of temperatures that will give you values of XC ranging from 0.8 to 0.99. And then our finally, final output of this exercise will be to plot T versus XC. So to complete this exercise, we're going to modify first our function and then our script that we wrote previously in a similar way that we did with F0. So remember, um, before with fsolve, what we had was we had one output, which was f, which was our vector of outputs, f of y. And then we had one input, y, which was our vector of unknowns. But now at this point, we're also going to have a list of parameters. Which are like extra constants or variables that we want to pass into our function. So this is kind of the same way that we did with F0. <clears throat> so in this function, of course, as before, we're going to unpack our unknowns vector y. We're going to define our mole fractions. And we don't want this one in here. That was a mistake. So that's gone. OK, so just define our mole fractions, where ya is the uh, 1 minus the other ones in the vapor stream, and xd is 1 minus xc in the liquid stream. Now, we're not going to define any other of our um, constants in this function anymore. So xc is not defined anymore. That was a mistake. That's out. Also, our system pressure and our four inlet molar component molar flow rates are also not going to be defined within our function. We have our two Antoine equations. This is, again, supposed to say Antoine here, as before. And then we're going to input our equations as before, and then finally pack up our function vector f as before. And so in general, you can see that this function looks basically the same as it did in the previous example, with the exception that we have a list of parameters here, which we then don't have to define down here anymore. So to see what this actually looks like in MATLAB, let's switch over to MATLAB. And so again, here is the function where the extra parameters are right here. These are the parameters that come after the first input which is our unknown vector y. <clears throat> we are defining our mole fractions there. And so we don't also have to define or give values for xc for the system pressure and for the inlet molar flow rates. We have, as before, our two Antoine equations, which are given here. And the rest of the function looks exactly the same as it did before. And so again, the only difference is you have these five as inputs now which we then therefore don't have to hardwire into this function as for particular values of those inputs. So those values must come in somewhere. And so now the, uh, we have to use our script to define our constants. And then in addition to that, because we're looking for a range of purities and therefore a range of temperatures that we're going to solve for, we have to call fsolve from within a for loop. And so first we're defining our constants in our script where our purity is this uh, vector, which is defined at, in using colon notation from 0 0.8 to 0 0.99. And also we will define our system pressure, etc. In the script, we will again define our initial guess value in our function handle. And then we have to call fsolve from within a for loop. So we'll write a for loop for i equals 1 to the length of our purity vector, or our um, liquid mole fraction of c vector. And we're going to call on fsolve, similar to the way we, all, we have before, where the first two arguments are our function handle and our initial guess. We're going to have a placeholder argument with empty brackets, as we did with f0. And then at the end here, we're going to have our extra constants or parameters in the same order as they're found in the function. And so then we're going to use fsolve within each uh, round of the for loop to solve for a different value of the purity and give us a different temperature. Now, it gives us all six of our unknowns every time we run fsolve. And so what we have to do is we have to put 
the, um, the sixth unknown, or the sixth solved unknown now, into a vector of temperatures, which we're going to have t, and we're going to index t by i. And so for every time it goes through the for loop, it adds another value of the temperature. Now, what did I leave out here? I specifically left, left out something in this call to fsolve, and maybe you guys can think about what that would be before we switch over to the MATLAB file, which we're about to do now. So here's the script that we just described. We have our vector of desired purity, which is our con constraint on the problem. We want xc to range from 0 0.8 up to 0 0.99 with an increment of 0 0.01. We have defined our system pressure. We defined our component inlet flow rates. And then to help us along with the initial guess as before, our total inlet molar flow rate. We defined our initial guesses the same way we did last time. And now we're going to call fsolve from within our for loop. So here's our function handle. Here is our for loop as i goes from 1 to the length of xc. We're going to call on fsolve. And the thing that I left out in the lecture notes there specifically was every time we run through fsolve, we have to give it a different value of xc. So um, for the ith iteration of the for loop, we're going to give it fsolve the ith value of xc. Now these all these other ones are just constants, and they're just going to stay the same every time we go through the for loop. <clears throat> now you might also no notice something different here. I've defined an options um, parameter or a variable here, which says that we want the display to be off. And that's because when we run fsolve, it spits out all of this information about the convergence criteria and uh, the way that fsolve ran. And so we're going to store that in this options vector using this optimus set function like this, as we saw in the previous screencast with, um, for, with the MATLAB solvers from the learnkimmy.com. And so now that options vector goes into that placeholder, which previously had empty brackets. So why don't I go ahead and run this and show you what it looks like with, um, with just empty brackets as a placeholder so you can see what happens. So I'm going to run this script. And when we, uh, the plot pops up, first of all. But when we look at our MATLAB command window, what we see is that for every single time it ran through the for loop, it spit out this junk, which we don't even need to see every time. And so that's why we run this options, where we make this display be off. And so if I run it this time, and we look over here, it ran the script without spitting out all that junk. Now here is the um, final output. And we see, of course, as the uh, mole fraction of C required goes up, the temperature of the reboiler must go higher and higher and higher to, to make it so that C is more and more pure and you um, boil off more and more of the, of the more volatile product D. Okay, so just to finish this up, um, to go back to the lecture notes, here is what the plot looks like in the lecture notes, which you can all see for yourself. And in the script, at the bottom of the script, this is how the plot looked and all the commands looked so that I made it pretty. I, I increased the font size and I gave it an X label and a Y label.